Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, many thanks for the nice presentation. First of all, I have to add to this. Uh, I'm not uh, a researcher, a scientist on political science. Uh, I was an acting politician for a longer time, and I still feel very much connected uh, to this part uh, uh, of the world and uh, what is happening here and therefore my view on the theme is a more political one by my experiences and uh, under which I'm suffering. I want to repeat, I'm suffering partly. First of all, allow me to say the general theme of uh, this morning, uh, in the age of conflict, I think we are always in an age of conflict. I think that's very nice. Uh, I don't know in which time we had more conflicts uh, so far. The character of the conflicts are for sure uh, are changing. Uh, it is a strange date in a certain way because in Central Europe and in Western Europe we are celebrating 100 years of the Paris Treaties uh, ending the First World War uh, and uh, the kind of jubilees uh, under which I'm suffering by delivering speeches and analysis to this is uh, that there's always a feeling from then on a certain kind uh, of peace has started. There was no peace because afterwards we had not only the Second World War but also a lot of conflicts in the different countries and we are still suffering by the changes uh, of uh, 1914, 1918 uh, here. It's quite an interesting approach. Obviously, I think you have the feeling it has some psychological reasons. We are trying to celebrate uh, that there was a solution in Paris in 1918, and nobody is really considering that the solution of 1918 was uh, creating a lot of new conflicts and difficulties for sure. Uh, I think that they have to seen together. Only an introductory remark. My second remark is also analyzing the title, Human Security is the Shifting Global Order. And I think I want to raise some question marks on this title. Uh, I think to be realistic, what is global nowadays? For sure we are speaking about globalization and I think if you are doing a speech or an analysis, you have always to refer to globalization. Uh, but is it true that we have really uh, a general look on the whole world or is it still separated? I think it is still more in a certain way regional. We have uh, by uh, other kinds of information uh, only more some knowledge uh, about other parts of the world but not in general. I think uh, maybe seen from my side in, in Europe Africa is still uh, a collection of question marks. Maybe those who have been colonial powers there do kn kn uh, know a little bit more, but also they uh, should have the knowledge about the problems uh, they have created by colonialism there, uh, which has a deep impact. I think, uh, to give you only one example, uh, what is happening in the suburbs uh, of uh, French cities is very much connected with French colonialism. Only one example, and I don't want to blame the French only, I think we Europeans can be blamed in general uh, on this subject, having no real process how to handle it and how to an analyze it is, is one of the difficulties for sure which are existing. But let's push aside, it's only an introductory remark, saying that we have only some knowledge. Aerocentrism is gone, that's one of the changes. Are we really polycentric? I think uh, I have my doubts. I think in a certain way uh, the uh, concentrating or a kind of centrism on the United States is reduced step by step thanks to Donald Trump. I think uh, for my generation, I have to confess, it is really horrible because we grew up after the Second World War in a uh, kind of admiration for the United States, the contribution for the stability of my part of Europe created by the Americans were re was really huge and so on and so on. Uh, but now I think maybe it's helpful. Uh, we are getting some kicks in the ass uh, by Donald Trump. Uh, and maybe uh, it is a way for Europe to be more self-responsible, for sure. That's a positive side uh, about, uh, in general, horrible uh, process we have. Uh, what is right? 
I think we are more connected, especially by the techno technological changes which are ex existing. But uh, I think it is not moving to a global order. I want to raise a lot of question marks on the title uh, of my speech. Uh, there's not really a global order existing. There are some parts, uh, but in general, there are no global rules. We have globalization, I think, by the economy, by the technology, especially uh, by information and so on and so on. But it was not possible to develop global rules in this context. Even, I may say, and I will a little bit focus on it, where we had some, it's going down and not going up, which for sure is a pity. Uh, I think, why do we have no global order? Because there's no global organizations. There are only some fictions. And these fictions, I repeat, uh, are partly uh, gone. And still, I think the global order is a very differentiated kind of chaos existing. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I'm always told, looking to the Bible, that chaos might be creative. But on the other side, I think it's also creating a lot of problems which are existing. For sure, there are some regional or personal attempts, I think, uh, to move forward. One of these is the European Union, but also the European Union uh, is for sure going down, not only by Brexit, because everybody is now speaking about Brexit. It's not only this. I think also in some European states, we are becoming even more problem looking to Catalonia and even the so-called United Kingdom, which is not too much united if you're looking to Scotland or something like that. And it's not only Scotland, and we have this development also in general. It, it might be a consequence of the real changes uh, which are existing. Uh, I think... Uh, the regional and partial attempts uh, to create some order, not a global one, uh, is helpful. Here I have a very positive judgment on the European Union, looking even to the problems in which uh, it is now, <coughs> and nobody can guarantee that it will be a persistent solution. I think uh, the possibility that this is breaking into pieces is also very much existing. And I think if we had to solve this situation, it will be even more horrible than Brexit can ever be uh, in the consequences. But this is another question. We, be, we have some time and uh, can make a meeting some years later on uh, to focus on this. So far, I'm not doing it. I think there were some attempts, especially after the Second World War, to move forward. Um, one example are the United Nations. In the beginning of the United Nations, uh, in 1945, I think there were 50 states around. Now we are close to 200. Okay, great solution. No, not a great solution, uh, because the United Nations is closer to a disaster than uh, to a solution. Why? Everything what has, has happened uh, on, on uh, problems, I'm looking, for example, to the Ukraine question. I'm looking to Syria and, and the Near East and so on. Everything is happening without the United Nations. It's not even on the agenda. Uh, I think if they are not able to get solutions, okay. Uh, what we are doing is sometimes uh, not to create more solutions, but to create more problems. But it is not even on the agenda. See, therefore, you can say, I think the United Nations uh, are not really working in the right direction, and we have not even a discussion about this. Uh, I was for 12 years the chair of the European Forum Alpach, and uh, in the premises of this, we had a working group uh, in a close connection with Ban Ki-moon uh, about reform of the Security Council. There were beautiful, nice meetings in Alpach, in the mountains area, and all the participants were saying, it's beautiful, we want to come again next year. And my question was always, and what is the result of your meeting? I think they're always saying, we had one result, we want to meet next year again. Uh, that was it, no solution possible. Nice ambience, atmosphere, we are good, the meals, uh, and so on and so on, beautiful, uh, but there's moving nothing forward. Uh, the Security Council is the main instrument of, uh, instrument of the United Nations, and I think uh, how it is composed is outdated. Uh, in all my love to Europeans, uh, but Great Britain and France is in, no European Union is visible there, uh, and you can continue. 
For sure, I think there were some changes con concerning uh, China and so on and so on. But even, I think, where's Africa in this context? Where's South America and so on and so on? Uh, difficult for sure because there are no common organizations existing uh, with some power in Africa or in South America. Uh, but for sure, I think the Security Council is not mirroring the real situation of the so-called United Nations, which are for sure not really united. So far, in general, I think instrument of creating an order or a way of political organization is not existing. We are mainly based on a product uh, of uh, the French Revolution. It is a nation state, uh, but I think the nation state does not fit anymore to the problems we have. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of discussions about the nation state is not fitting to the uh, situation. I think it's not, not the solution. So everything is right, but I think we have no exercises to move uh, in other directions. Maybe here, one positive comment on the European Union. It is a part of a tiny solution in the right direction, but for sure it does not fit to the challenges in general, which we all know it's not necessary to elaborate. Uh, there are some other orders in a certain way created, created, uh, may I say, by science, by communication. Uh, the Internet is one of these. It is a kind of a global order with all the difficulties here internally existing. Uh, there's a feeling uh, about societies, uh, but we are not really able to handle it here for sure uh, in the right uh, way. We have to focus on the development, which was also yesterday mentioned, uh, about uh, the mega cities here existing, uh, creating new divisions between the rural area and the mega cities, uh, for sure, and that plays a very important role. We have no instrument, I think, to handle this, because there is no union of mega cities, and there is not even a, a union of the rural areas existing, uh, but we have a common situation uh, which we have to, to uh, solve. There is a certain way of more self-organization, but it is mainly more local or regional, uh, not in the right way. We have a general development on transport issues, for sure, uh, but with all the problems, uh, they are not really solved. You can see the crisis in which uh, uh, the uh, airlines are in midst. They are not really able to solve their problems internally, uh, and for sure, uh, the, the airline system is coming closer to crisis, not even only by delays and something like that, but also if you look to the uh, economic uh, quality of the airlines, I think you can raise a, a lot of doubts uh, if it will be a sustainable solution. I have my doubts. Uh, second question which I want to raise is what means security? I think uh, here as a politician I have to confess that it is a huge problem even, even in my small country. Everybody is focusing on security. It is the top lines uh, uh, for the presidency of Austria and the European Union. We put security uh, as a head remark what we are doing, but what is really meant by security is not uh, quite clear. What is security? I think that there are no wars, uh, for sure. That's uh, for sure not enough, because, and I think we have to say quite clearly, there are still a lot of wars, trade wars existing, maybe uh, wars uh, on the field of banks and so on. I think I can uh, continue and we will uh, look to, to cyber war uh, in one of the speeches afterwards. Uh, migration is also a kind of a war. It's a mixed situation, maybe by climate changes, uh, by fame uh, for sure existing by the desire of the human being to live under better conditions, uh, and so on and so on. I think so far it's extremely difficult to say what is security. I think for sure there are some uh, political movements and even some governments moving in the direction to guarantee security, uh, but is it really security? If everything is quiet because the political power is pressing down everything, 
uh, okay, that's a kind of security because nothing is happening, but the feel, feeling of freedom is not existing. I think we have to create a kind of relation between freedom and security. I think here uh, the borders are quite shifting in every direction possible. I think but the feeling of security, as far as I can see it in, in Europe, uh, it's creating, I think, even more police, more control, uh, and so on and so on, which I think might be a real problem further on, because it has nothing to do with democracy. I think uh, the relation between democracy and security has to be discussed. In which way can security be done for keeping or even developing democracy? Uh, even the security of democracy. I think if there's more security, there's less democracy. Uh, that's a, uh, for sure a clear relation, and I think until now it was not really uh, handled. I think there's a certain development uh, uh, which brings me up my historic uh, memory. I think uh, Pythia in, in the old time of, of or in the time of old Greece, uh, as the Persians uh, uh, were threatening uh, Athens uh, and the Hellenic cities, I think Pythia said, go behind wooden walls. Uh, it was a very important message, <laughs> maybe right in this time, but now everybody now is going not behind wooden walls, but other walls. I think the creation by politics of fancies and walls, I think, is even increased. I'm running around and always telling them uh, old China built up a huge wall, the biggest one, uh, but it was no security. And I think it does not really work. But we are doing it. I think if I'm going back now from here uh, to Austria, I have to go uh, through more border control than we ever had. And a long line because uh, the Hungarian uh, government is eager, the Austrian government is also eager to do it, and our beloved ministers of interior try to create uh, more importance if they are uh, regaining control and so on and so on. I think Schengen is more and more step by step an illusion, uh, which is not so existing. And for sure the ministers of interior and the parties in the governments are very proud to do it. And uh, may I say, uh, and it's a great concern for me, there is no movement against. Everybody is uh, fed up about the long waiting lines, okay, understandable. Uh, but uh, the only reaction in Austria is existing. Ah, we had these long waiting lines at Brenda and so on and so on. And there were more control, okay, we have already had it. Maybe it, it might vanish. I think the interesting case, I think it's not necessary to, to, to focus on problems of my country. I think we have a tough border control between Austria and Bavaria. May I say not Germany, Bavaria. Huh? I think uh, everybody is convinced that the Austrians and Bavarians are quite close together. No. Concerning border control, no. And the reason is a very primitive one. Minister Seehofer, still being in charge of interior affairs, wants to have it. I think there's no real need. I'm raising all the questions, how many people, uh, how many persons have you kept by this? None. I think nine, I think in half a year or something like that. But it's giving a certain impression of security. I think here you have to put the question marks of what is security meant uh, in this context. And uh, what I'm not able to solve is what is the real background of this development? Uh, is it enough, I think, to give this visibility of a kind of security which is no security? Uh, or what is a real reason here for sure? And I think uh, here you have the close connection between author authoritarian developments uh, and security. And I think it might be even increased. The mutual assistance on this question is not too much existing. I think uh, here, that's one of the problems. Uh, in this way, the European Union is fading out uh, in a very bad way, uh, because I think there's more suspicion, more existing than a, a solution. Uh, I think what are the real, uh, problem, uh, real problems of security? I think is it a question of the behavior of the human beings? Is it an increase of criminality, which are by statistics uh, I can see is not existing? I think uh, it's more created by politics. And I think it's a real danger for democracy. 
I think what we really have concerning security is a kind of a crisis of democracy. Uh, I think we are not really able to handle it, and there are not real movements, and to be a little bit critical on universities, the contribution of discussion by the universities on the subject is also in limits, which for sure is a pitle. pity. I think going back, what are the instruments for security? For sure rules by legislation, uh, security control and so on and so on, but the number of uh, uh, police is increasing. And another part is increasing, uh, this is uh, the creating of weaponry. I think uh, the weapons industry is a huge, uh, big field. Uh, I think uh, I'm admiring uh, Donald Trump because quite bluntly, concerning Khashoggi in Saudi Arabia, he said, ah, we don't want to cancel selling of weapons because it's very good for working places and very good for the business and so on and so on. Bluntly said, there's no huge uproar about such a comments because I think then we have to produce more weapons and more weapons and the working places will be secure. Will be the freedom of life, will be the life in general more secure with more weaponry? No. Because weapons have one consequence. If it is more, they want to be used. Uh, out of a primitive reasons, you have to use it that you can order new weapons. I think that's a circle, a devil circle, which for sure here is existing. We have no real problem, of, uh, no real discussion about disarmament. I think there are some movements to cancel regulations of disarmament recently, uh, which were done on both sides, on the Russian side and uh, on the American side. But in general, I think it is a real problem. Even on the more primitive uh, situation, I think still you have a success as a candidate uh, for the Rep House of Representatives or Senate if you are in favor of the National Rifle Association in the United States. I think that's more armament. One of the proposed solutions about security is everybody should have a pistol, a rifle, and then they can shoot. Huh? We know. Uh, we human beings are sometimes crazy. So far, there's a tendency, I think, to use rifles and pistols existing because it's obviously offering a feeling of a freedom. If I can shoot, and so on and so on. I think here we need more uh, research, more exercise, and I think more public discussions uh, on the subject. So far, I think it's necessary to create another kind of feeling for security. Uh, about the lim limits done voluntarily or, or by force, that's one of the great uh, question marks which are really existing. I'm not really able to answer the question uh, which was raised here, uh, human security in the shifting global uh, order. The global order is shifting, we don't know where, uh, but also I think it is a problem uh, I think uh, in which way it can be secured and so on and so on. We have a problem concerning democracy and decision making on this subject, but this is a huge problem not only concerning security, but also economy, social questions and so on and so on. Thank you very much for your patience.